2.2, data binding with Java beans. So this is a very important topic. From our video B.1, we learned the you know, preparation, calling setters, getters, actually, uh, the container calls setters and the getters, but we prepare that part for the container. That kind of thing, what we have done, things like that, already halfway of the data binding. So we prepare things, get it ready for the data binding. So for this part, we will look at the remaining half. So we just uh, complete the setting for the data binding. So the container will do it automatically. So this is an important, very useful concept in web program. All right associate individual properties with input parameters. The individual properties from bin, the JSP bin, okay? JSP bin a little more general than a Java bin. So not necessarily a strictly, uh, you know, Java bin following the specification, but we just want the setter getter part following the rules specified in the Java B specification. Otherwise, we cannot do the data by. So we need that part, that particular part. All right. To do that, we need to use the param attribute, extra param attribute in this set property, JSP colon set property. So name point to the bin reference, right? ID. So we have, you know, point to the bin reference property. Now we want to do the data copy, right? Data copy. One from property from that bin. My top from my bean, Java class. Another param. So what's that? What's that? My param. The input parameter. So where is your input parameter? Okay. So here I give you a typical example. Typical example. All right. So suppose we have a form, HTML form. Action. All right. Yeah. So method. All right. Yeah. Form. Then inside your form, you have one input element. And although you can specify size and other things, but otherwise you close it. Okay. So when a user type input value in this field and the submit button, so yeah, so we have a submit button. the data to the server, you know, server side processing file. So here, this server side processing file, you point to that. So when you send to it, then, so here, because this one you need to point to actually
they point to the JSP containing this one. Yeah, it looks like it's better to send a JSP containing that line, right? Otherwise, how do we connect, right? Yeah. So you send to this J, a JSP data processing file. We know JSP, we can do data processing, right? Yeah. So in that JSP processing file, because when you send to this JSP processing file in this action here, the data submitted to this file, so you can retrieve using param attributes. You can retrieve the value and copy it to this property. The container will do that. So you don't need to do anything. You just use the value. The container will do that. All right. So here I describe a typical situation. Okay? Typical situation here, it means sometimes you may not follow things like this. Okay? So sometimes you may have a different way to send the data. Right? Yeah, sometimes you have, for example, you, you can use a JavaScript function to send the data, send to this JSP. Yeah? So you have many different ways to. Or can you use a hyperlink to send the data? So you have many different ways to send data to this JSP file, this one. Data processing JSP file. All right, so I just give you the, you know, the story, the typical story uh, using this feature. Next, there is some possible data conversion happen. Because when you do data copy, copy from one place to another place. How about the data type? Do they have the same data type or not? Okay. So that kind of thing you need to consider. Yeah. So the container will handle that data conversion part. Yeah. So the parameter values are strings. So the parameter values coming from HTML page are in the string format. Okay. So initially, we have the string parameter values. Even the numbers, they are in the string format. Okay, one, two, three, but it's in the string one, two, three. Okay. String one, two, three. Not number one, two, three. Okay. That's the way we send the data. Some of the bin properties may not be of string type. Yeah, so one, two, three, but at this side, you need an integer type. Right? Inside of Java, you need an integer data type. Okay? Yeah. So that happens frequently. So for that situation, JSP automatically performs type conversion from the strings to numbers, characters, holding values. So it will based on the, so inside your bin, JSP bin, so it will check, so what's the data type? Okay. So it will check the property data type. Okay. Yeah. So it will after it get the property data type, then it will do the automatic data conversion. Okay. So if the specified input parameter is missing, yeah, here we need to talk about a special situation. The input parameter could be missing. Yeah, for example, this my param in the file, you send that field, that name is missing. There is no such name. Okay? So if that happens, what you should do? Okay? Yep. So here it tells you 
when that happens, it is missing. Yeah. No action is taken. So you, you skip the slot. So this data copy line, just skip it. Do not do anything. Okay? Yeah. So, and uh, you do not set that property to null, null value. Okay? Don't, don't do that. If you set to null value, you change the value. So here, if the property name missing, we don't want to change the, the value, right? So we still want to keep the old value. All right, so that's the rule we need to follow. Yeah, uh, so, yeah so another situation. Because in our previous page, you need to do line by line mapping. One property, one parameter name, you'll do the mapping. Okay? Yeah. But sometimes it's not very efficient. So it's not very efficient. You may have large number of properties, field names, you need to do the mapping. So there is a quick way to do. So, so here, the shortcut. The shortcut syntax is if the property name and field name, so they have the same name, exactly the same name, then you can use the star. Okay? Yeah. So all the field, all the properties, same names, do the copy automatically. Okay. All right. So the requirement, the property names must match parameter names exactly, including the case. Okay. So if you have that, so then, you just uh, do the data copy element. So for that reason, when you design your JSP, your Java beans, make sure you use the properties, names, match the input field names. In that way, so you can save a lot of coding. Yeah. All right, yeah. So, but remember, so if input parameter is missing, yeah. But why we worry about input parameter missing? Yeah, it happens. Sometimes if you misspell the input field name, yeah, people can misspell. If you misspell that, then yeah, you try to match property name, but it couldn't find one in the input field mismatch. So then no action. No action. Yeah. So when you see that phenomenon, you really need to check the spelling. Okay? Yeah. Let me misspell the info field now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Next, use request time expressions for certain attribute values. Here, for this part, we may use dynamic value. So not a fixed value. Okay? So the, for the examples we have seen, so far, we use the fixed static values. Yeah. But sometimes we need to use dynamic values. The values come from variables. Yeah. So here we look at how to do that. Yeah. So we still, yeah. uh, so we use the, the way we used the before, right? Yeah. So said probably. So that's the static, here the static value. But now we like to change the dynamic value. Look at what, what example here. The dynamic value we can do in two, two places. Okay, see? The bean name, the bean reference name, that could be dynamic. So here we use the EL. Okay? So here you can see EL is very useful. Because the name is very expression is very compact, very concise. So we don't want to use a very complicated expression. We want to use a very simple, small expression. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Then the value we can make it dynamic. Okay. Still, in this place. The best way to use the dynamic value is the expression. Yeah. So 
we will delay, but here you, you can already you, you get the idea it is very useful. Yeah. Alright, so then the last page. Now when we include values for our properties, there is one special thing we need to consider. So that is the attribute values containing special character se sequences. Some characters very special. So you need to do some special treatment on those special characters. Otherwise, you will get a problem. Here, so let's look at those special characters. All right. In order to use these special characters, for example, apostrophe. Yeah. Apostrophe is very special because we use apostrophe, you know, to mark value of attribute. So that's a special character. But inside the, your attribute value, if you want to put a literal single quote or apostrophe, you need to use the escape backslash escape to you know tell the container. I want to use this literal character. Similarly, double quote escape it. Okay? Very straightforward. Backslash escape it. When you escape it, double it. Okay, double backslash. But another one very special. So remember, in our GSP, we use many, you know, scriptlet. There are many places we use this percent greater than combination. When you have it, if it is in the value of some attribute, you need to put backslash escape this greater than in this combination escape it. So the container will know it. So what do you want to do? Okay. All right. Another one, this symbol combination, then you do this way. Okay. So escape the second one. The combination, two characters. You escape the second one. Okay. All right. So after that, you know, these special things, the rules in this way. So then, so when you use the static value or dynamic values, you know, so in your JSP, yeah, so you can be, you can choose the right way to do it. Yeah. Alright, so let's complete this part.